Hey everybody, happy first day of fall. Hope you're all doing well. We have a lovely fall day here in Kansas City. Exactly fall-like, perfect day. I've got my windows open, which is creating a lot more allergies, but I did put my makeup on for you today, <laughs> unlike Monday. Hope you're all doing well. Please say hello in the comments. I'd love to talk with you, chat with you, know who's with us. Um, while we wait for people to log on, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the project we're working on today. Today is September 22nd, so we've got about a little less than 10 days left in the month. And that means that celebration is winding down. Let me turn my camera around here. Let me, this is gonna be kinda in my face. I've really gotta figure something else out. I wish that, there we go. I could rig something up for my ceiling. <laughs> That's what I really would like to do. Um, but that would be pretty permanent. There we go. Hey, um, celebration is um, a month long during the, well, actually it's been two months during the month of August and September. And with every $50 order, uh, you can choose a free item out of the celebration brochure. There are stamp sets. There is beautiful designer series paper. There are dies. Um, I don't think we have any embellishments this year or in this bro brochure, but we do have some beautiful stamp sets. So remember that uh, when you're placing your order, if you're close to $50, add some adhesive or something to get there so that you can um, get that free item. Um, and that goes away the last day of September, so September 30th. So I did want to remind you of that. Um, today's, this is, we're going to use the same stamp set that we used in our 3D project that we made on Monday. This is the little um, pumpkin decor item that we made. Hi Kay, how are you? And we used the Gorgeous Leaves stamp set with the coordinating dies, which I've got in here on my little magnet. That's how I store mine. Hi, Susan. Glad to have you. Um, but you get all of these dies. You get the intricate leaves, this little stem, and then three dies for the stamped images. We're going to use these three dies today in our project. So I'm using that bundle again. Hey, Kim, glad to see you live today. Um, here's a little tag that we worked on Monday using those stamped images. We just stamped them on some cardstock and then cut them out. Kay says she's great and the weather is fantastic there. That's awesome because it's fantastic here too. Doesn't it kind of put a little skip in your step when you... The weather gets a little cooler. I've been spending a lot of time out on my porch, but like I said, my allergies are killing me. <laughs> but I'm not going to let it stop me from spending some time outside. Okay, I'm using some non-traditional colors for my card today. We're going to do a little sponging, some embossing. We're going to do a little um, distressing. So we're going to work on um, a few little techniques for this card. Um, the inspiration for this card came from Pinterest, although on the picture it just said Instagram, and when I went to the link, I could not find the link. So I apologize to whoever created a card similar to this um, using a different stamp set. I it, But your card was beautiful, and it inspired me to create this one. <laughs> so... Um, I always like to give credit to people if I um, if they um, inspire me to do my project. Okay, for my card base, I'm choosing a choosing. I chose <laughs> a piece of eight and a half by five and a half um, balmy blue cardstock. I scored it at four and a fourth and folded it in half. 
It says, Kim says, Leslie, do you cut your dies for each set out and put them on cardstock? Do you cut your dies out? Um, well, I sometimes, if you're talking about this, I do. Um, I just keep a little folder with all of my sets in it, um, mainly just to show you guys um, or my my customers or my friends um, what all you get. It's it's kind of easier to know what you're getting when you look at that compared to that. You know what I mean? So yeah, if that's what you're talking about, yeah, I try and do that. I, I won't say that it happens every time, but when I get a new die set, I do try and do that. So if I hope that answered your question, Kim. Okay. Um, okay. And then for the next layer, I used a piece of our shimmery white, and I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. But um, this is shimmery white cardstock. It's great for watercolor. Um, and I just chose it because we're going to do a little splitter splatter. And I thought the um, little shimmer paper would look kind of fun with our um, leaves on top of it. So, And I did emboss it with the timber embossing folder. It's kind of a wood, wood grain. I don't know if the camera's picking that up either. We're going to also emboss the little leaves as soon as we create those. But I went ahead and um, embossed this piece of um, shimmery white cardstock just to give it a little texture. And then I have this little tool. It's a Tim Holtz tool. It's a distressing tool that I took and went around the edges on mine. Now, I got this years ago at a box store. Um, I know you can also use the edge of your little scissors. Um, to distress your edges. Just kind of do that. So there's no need to really buy a tool. You can also use a sand block, which looks like this. And I, like I said, I bought this years ago as well at a um, craft store somewhere. <laughs> but it's a little sandpaper. But then I found this tool, and it's got these little um, sharp edges in these grooves, and it just kind of makes it go a little faster. You could probably just use some sandpaper as well. Um, but since I have this tool, I'm going to use it. So we're, we're just kind of making this little piece of shimmery white cardstock look a little tattery. Hi, Donna. So I'm just running it around. I probably don't care if it would even rip a little bit, but I'm not going to go that far. I just want it to, to look um, distressed on the edges. Now, I said using this tool is easier. I don't know if it's any faster because this is how I used to distress my edges. It's just with the edge of your sharp little paper snips. So whatever you've got, use it. You don't need to buy anything for that. <laughs> and then I'm just going to kind of crinkle up the corners like that. Nothing extreme. And then I'm not going to adhere it down all the way. I want it to kind of fold up on the edges. Is this kind of shabby chic? Is that is that even a term anymore? <laughs> is shabby chic a term, girls? Still? I know uh, farmhouse chic. <laughs> Maybe this is considered farmhouse. Anyway, so see how it kind of looks like it's peeling up from the from the edge of the card. Hi, Joy! Okay, now to make my little leaves, um, I did some sponging, so I'm going to grab a scrap paper so I don't get my surface all icky, 
And this is a piece of just basic white cardstock. And I'm using Balmy Blue and Pacific Point. My Balmy Blue really needs, um, it's got stuff on it. It really needs re-inked, but we'll, we'll get it going here. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have blending brushes in your um, stash or in your craft supplies. I really, um, you can use the Stampin' Sponges, which I is easy to blend with. This is one I use for adhesive, but um, they work just as well, but I kind of like having this handle. Donna Pollock has a few. I have a few too, and I'm trying to decide if I want to invest in having, you know, one for every color. I don't know. And then how do I store them? I have them in just a cup right now. The, the few I have are in a cup. Kay has blending brushes. It does seem to go faster with the handle. So I'm just putting the balmy blue kind of on that side. Now I'm going to take the darker um, Pacific Point and just kind of butt it up next to it. And it doesn't take much for that one because that one's so dark. We're going to cut out several of these leaves so I, I'm gonna just fill this whole sheet with um, ink. Kay says she has hers in color families. So can you explain that Kay? Like do you use one for all your brights, one for all your regals, or just like one for all your reds, one for all your blues? Is that what you mean? that you put yours in color families? Um, Kim, I do have some makeup brushes too. This, In fact, this is a makeup brush. These are the um, Stampin' Up! ones. They just have a bigger surface. I think the little, um, what do you call them? <laughs> feather, the little um, whatever, the brush part of it is a, a little more dense on the Stampin' Up! ones than these. I think the quality is a little better, but this one's work, it works just fine for what we need it to do. But I would say that the Stampin' Up! quality is um, better. They're more dense, um, broader, but these work fine too. So, okay, and I don't know why I had that third one out, but that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to do a little splattering. So Kay washes hers. Um, Donna does reds, green, and blue. See, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, Kim does blues, reds, yellows, and she cleans them really well after I use them. I don't clean mine. <laughs> That's my problem. Let's see. And Kay washes hers too. Reds, yellows, blues. So that it sounds like your guys are kind of doing it the same way. I probably should clean mine. How do you clean yours? Do you... Um, just wash them in soap and water or just rinse them under water like a paintbrush. All right, I'm going to do something weird because uh, this is going to splatter all over. So this is my splatter box. I mentioned this Monday. Um, before I do that, let me show you what I'm going to do. It's just a box. Um, I really need a smaller one. And I'm going to take I could take some ink refill, but I'm just going to take some um, 
I had this out from our project on Monday. <laughs> Some little white craft paint and a little black craft paint. And I'm just going to put it on my little silicone mat here and add a little water. Oop, that's probably too much. And um, grab a paintbrush for the black because I don't want too much black. I just want a tiny bit of that. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush for the white because I would like quite a bit of white to splatter. Okay. Um, am I, are you nervous yet? I'm going to stand up to do this. <laughs> so I'm going to close this off so I'm not distracting and you don't see my belly. <laughs> oh, nobody wants to see that. Okay, here's my splatter box. And I'm just going to take my um, paintbrush and use my thumb. So it's messy. If you don't like your hands to get, um, you know, icky, wear a, a little plastic surgical glove. And then for the black, I'm just going to kind of tap my paintbrush. So that's why I added the water to... Um, to my paint. I wanted it to be a little watery so it would splatter real well. Okay, so that's all we're going to use the um, splatter box for. <laughs> but remember when we used the sprays and everything um, the other day? I should have used that because I got the spray all over my um, my desk. Okay, so next, here's our card so we can follow that. Let's let that dry a little bit on its own and we'll stamp our um, sentiment. I have a little, um, just a scrap of uh, basic white. And I am going to use, where's my stamp set? I'm going to use this um, little splatter image from the stamp set onto this. With the um, balmy blue ink. I'm going to put this over because it's going to stamp off. Oh, Donna Pollock uses wet ones to clean her blending brushes and then just rub them until no color comes out. Oh, that would be quick. So after each use, you could just clean them. Kay has a soft rubber thingamajig with bumps on, <laughs> and she scrubs across that and dries them in an old coffee cup brush end up. I store mine in an old coffee cup, so um, that would be easy. Um... It's kind of like they have those uh, makeup brush cleaners, Kay, what you're kind of talking about. So it doesn't sound like it's very hard to clean them. Okay, like I said, my uh, Balmy Blue needs re-inked, but I think we have enough to, to get it to go. And I, what did I do? This is not what I wanted. I was looking for my foam mat, which I can't find at the moment. So that was weird. That was foam all right, but it wasn't what I was looking for. Okay, so the balmy blue just gave it a little splat in the background.
and then I'm going to take some memento ink and the happy birthday I am taking from the sweet as a peach um, stamp set. I really liked the font and thought it would look good and it's a perfect size for the tag that we're going to use. So that's where my happy birthday sentiment came from. All right, is this dry? We might need to just give it a little burst with our uh, heat tool. Okay, basically what I did is I made a really pretty background. <laughs> we could cut this down and use this for a card front. It would be really gorgeous. But we're going to cut um, leaves out of it for our card front. So what did I do with my dies? I think I put them away. I'm going to have to run this through a couple of times. So I'm using the leaf outlines, not the, um, the intricate ones. And what I'm trying to do is kind of get both colors on those leaves. That's why I kind of did it like this. So it looks like we're fading out. Does that make sense? Um, I'm sitting down again, so hi. <laughs> I just want you guys to know you're not talking to a pair of hands. <laughs> so we're going to run that through, and we're also going to run our happy birthday through. I'm using the Tasteful Labels dies. This is from, carried over from last year's annual catalog, I believe. But they're really nice for tags and... Um, put sentiments on. So we'll run that through while we're there. Make sure I've got it straight. And I am going, oh, you guys, before I cut these leaves out, I, I added some texture to my leaves. I don't know if you can tell, but I ran it through this timber um, embossing folder. So let's do that first. I'm gonna do it over here on the side so that it doesn't shake the whole table up. So can you you can kind of see it with all the colors and everything. It just it's just going to give the leaves a little bit of a um, texture. So let's run that through real quick. In the meantime, this is the um, bundle I'm using. It's on page 47 of our holiday mini catalog. If you don't have a catalog and would like one, please let me know. I'd be happy to send one to you. When you buy the stamp set and the dies together, 
you save 10%. So that's always nice that Stampin' Up! does that for us because who, you want the dies, right? I do. <laughs> no fussy cutting for me. I just signed up, um, today was the last day. I almost missed it. Demonstrators, um, we have what's called on stage. Every November, where we get to the uh, new, um, what do you call it? The new spring mini catalog is revealed. And um, this year it will be virtual again. We'll have a virtual meeting. It's a kind of a two-day event, three-day event, two-and-a-half-day event. Um, so I just signed up for that. So I feel like we're just getting used to this catalog, and we're going to have a new one coming, coming soon. Hi, Letha. Okay, so I've got six of these. Um, I think I'm going to do one more of the... The maple leaf. I think that's what I did on my sample here. I have got a mess. So if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, today is the last day for you to sign up for that or to register for that. I went last year virtually um, to the on stage, and it was very, it was good quality deal. It was, they have a special platform that they do it on. It's not like going to a Zoom meeting. So don't think if you've never done it before that it's going to be like a Zoom meeting. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can watch it on your computer. Alrighty, so now I'm going to just um, take my bone folder and kind of distress my leaves a little bit. I think it kind of looks like the leaves are kind of just falling from the sky, right? And if you join late, I, I was inspired um, for this card by a card I found on Pinterest. It wasn't exactly like this, but I basically am using her leaf layout and all that. Um, I'm assuming it was a her, but I could not find through the link who designed the card. So um, please know that somebody smarter than me designed this card. <laughs> Okay, like this layer that I just kind of attached and left it kind of um, falling off, I'm going to do the same thing with my leaves. And I'm using the um, stamp and seal and it's, you know, it's going to hold them on there. But I kind of want them to have dimension if that, if that makes sense. I don't want them to be flat against the page. So I'm gonna, then I'm going to decide where I want my tag. I'll move this one up a little bit. And I'm going to put that on with some dimensionals. Hi, Carol. Thank you. Like I said, somebody else kind of designed this card. They use different stamps than I'm using, but very similar but I couldn't find out who who it was the links weren't working okay so that's what I did with the big ones now we're gonna fill in oh my fingernails are looking terrible now we're going to, I'm going to do the bow and then I'm going to add the other little leaves. So for the bow, I'm using the, um, 
what is this called? It's the white crinkled seam binding. I need to order some more because I love this stuff and I'm almost out. I thought we were making kind of a shabby sheet card or a farmhouse card, whatever they're calling it lately. Carol says, sold her condo, so not sure how much stamping I will be doing. Oh, no, are you packing to move? <sighs> Moving is hard. So I'm going to just take a little um, mini glue dot, uh, which has fallen and can't get up. I think it fell behind my desk. <laughs> Getting rid of stuff. That's what I need to do is get rid of stuff. <laughs> okay, my mini glue dots fell on the floor behind the edge of my desk and the wall. So I'm going to try this with liquid glue. But normally I would probably use a mini glue dot right here. Leith is not good at getting rid of stuff. I'm not either. I keep thinking I'll organize, get organized, but it doesn't happen. Okay, this is retired. Um, I don't even know what it is, but it's balmy blue and silver <laughs> Baker's Twine, and I just loved it with this card. So I'm using some retired product. If you have some silver trim, that would be cute on top of this, or just some blue trim. Okay, and then I attached it right on top of that seam binding ribbon with a mini mini glue dot, but I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue since I can't find my mini glue dots at the moment. Well, I know where they're at. I'm just not going to take the time to dig them out. I have a little hook here over on my desk carousel that holds all my supplies. And when I hung them up there on that hook, after I did this one, I thought, I didn't do a very good job on that. They're going to fall, and they did. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to mess with that much until that glue dries. But I am going to take these two little leaves. My fingers are, and I've got black paint my thumb. Apologize for that. And I'm going to take a mini glue dot and kind of adhere them together. Just to give it a little dimension there. And then I'm going to kind of scooch it under the tag. I want it to be able to fit in the envelope, so I want it. I don't want it to jut out too far, um, and I might have to cut these stems off. There we go. So I'm going to just take a little bit of um, this multi-purpose liquid glue and tuck those leaves right under there. There we go. Okay. Now, if I should put one more leaf there. This one is, I didn't put a leaf there on this one. I wonder if it needs another one. 
What do you all think? <laughs> hey, Loopy. I think I need to add one more leaf. I think I'm going to. <laughs> Okay, my sister-in-law's birthday was yesterday. Oops. So she's going to get one of these cards for her birthday card. I kind of like it with the extra leaf. What do you guys think? Do you like the this one? Would that be the one on my right and the one on the left? Do you like it with less or more? <laughs> I always say more is more. And then finally, I added some, get rid of all the trash here, Ooh. some of these um, Genial Gems. You like the one on the right. Two votes for the one on the right with the extra leaf. Yay. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, no, she won't be watching. She won't be watching. Okay, and so I don't know what color these are. They're kind of green, so they're going to kind of, um, they're probably more of a mint macaron than a, a blue, but I thought they went pretty good with my blues. So I'm going to put this one down here. So it kind of follows a path. I've heard that when you put these things on here, it should be in a triangle or follow a path. So it kind of follows a path there. And then we can probably trim out this ribbon a little bit. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. So the inspiration for this card, I love that she used non-traditional um, colors for a fall card. I just think it's it was um, thinking outside the box, which is hard for me to do. <laughs> so I'll add another leaf to this one so they'll match. But um, that's our card for today. Um, if I can answer any questions for you, Kim says, I have never known from the camera view that they weren't blues. That's fun. You like the texture on the card. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. Um, it seems like I have something Monday, but maybe not. You'd think I would know. I keep it on my phone, and then I use my phone as my camera, so I can't check to let you all know. <laughs> what's on my calendar but if I'm not available Monday at 2 I will let you know oh Kim says the gems yeah I think once you take them away from each other and just kind of scatter them on the card they do kind of just look like a different shade of blue so I think they work fine so thank you guys have a great Monday have a great weekend and if I can answer any questions for you just don't hesitate to reach out to me we'll talk soon bye bye